Buenas noches, everybody. Uh, my name is Mespin Hodes. Um, I'm from Ethiopia, but I live in New York City now. Today, I'm here to share with you a story about my unexpected journey. Life is a road filled with roses, but paved with thorns. I know we don't even know each other, but I want you guys to close your eyes for a moment because I want to uh, paint a picture for you guys. So close your eyes. I want to take you back in time to when you guys were seven years old. What do you see? Do you see your neighborhood? Are there trees? A nice paved road? Can you imagine your bedroom? Can you think about your breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and how fortunate you were to have that? Were you mad at your siblings for not playing with you? Were you angry at your parents because they forced you to eat vegetables? I want you guys to open your eyes now. I'm going to paint you a different picture. So this is the street life of Addis Ababa. As you can see, there's about five kids who are sleeping next to each other on the side of a busy road with nothing to wear. In Ethiopia, is, it gets pretty cold at night. Um, and this is, as you can see, is what they have. There's no, there's no blanket, there's nothing. You just have your T-shirt or you know, whatever you're wearing that day. Imagine walking around for hours to find a spot to sleep in. Imagine not knowing if you're going to eat that day or not. Even, even worse, imagine if you're not going to make it the next day. Imagine you die on the streets. We walked for hours. We were hungry for days without food, without parents, without anyone giving us and guiding us. It's a tough, tough life in Addis Ababa on the streets. I want to take you back again to one of my hardest days. I remember this day like it was yesterday, so clear in my memory. It was a beautiful day, and I was sitting beside a busy road, begging for money. But unfortunately, not a single person gave me as little as a penny. We went around to restaurants to see if they have leftover foods. Nothing. Nothing, nothing. So I decided to go to one of my favorite spots, which was a park by a busy road. I love that park so much because there's so many flowers and I love flowers. But the reason I went to the park was because I was hungry, I haven't eaten for two days, and I just gave up. And I thought this was it, this was my life, and I wanna, I guess, die in a better place looking at flowers instead of just on a busy side of a road. So as I laid down on the bench, even the flowers looked as if they too were dying. And dying was nothing new to us. You know, we saw kids die because of the pain of hunger took over them. You've seen kids die because of the disease that we were exposed on the streets. And I knew eventually my, my day would come too. And I was okay. I, I had hoped that there was something better, but if this is it, this is it. So I, I laid down on a bench thinking, this is it, I'm going to die. And a few minutes later, I hear a man of a voice that said, you don't look well, son, and hands me less than a quarter. Think about it, less than a quarter, okay? I took that quarter, I went out, 
bought some food, and life kind of restarted. Now imagine a quarter changing your life. Just a quarter. From that day on, I was back to the streets again, back to begging for money, begging for food. So the life was extremely, extremely, extremely tough. I want to tell you a, a short story about uh, these two young fish by David Foster. So there's these two young fish who are swimming, and they happen to meet an older fish that was swimming on the other way, who looks at them and says, morning, boys, how's the water? And the two fish swim on, and eventually one of them goes to the other, what the hell is water? The point of the water story is because that poverty was like my water. That's all I knew. That's all we knew on the street. There was nothing else. There was no future. There was no dreams. There's no goals. You don't know. You don't know the next day. You don't know if you're going to live the next day. And this is what we had. And this was my reality. A future with no hope. No dreams, thinking you're going to die the next day. But you hope. You hope that, you know, if there's a God that he'll pick you up. Until one day, this amazing man is my father. He is the reason I came out of the water. He's the reason I, I started going to school. I started seeing new things that I've never seen, a, a, a car, a house. Yeah, it was a, my first time in a car was so shocking because I've never been in one. Um, but he gave me a new opportunity. He gave me a new purpose for, for a life. Now I know I have a future. I can go to school now. And everything kind of was a new journey. This is my dad trying to attempt a selfie. Well, I think he did a good job. Um, let me tell you a little about him. So he is from New York City, moved to Africa about 30 years ago. Okay? And the reason he went to Africa was to teach at a university for a year or two, had not planned to live in Africa whatsoever, doesn't know the language, doesn't know the culture, but he was still willing to go and see and help and do whatever he can. He could have easily stayed in America as a doctor and made a lot of money. But that wasn't the, the life he wanted. That was just easy to sit in America, become a doctor. Hard work, but you have a good life. You can have your own family. None of that. He dropped everything because he knew there were people in need in Ethiopia especially. And he's been, he saved maybe 5,000 people, changed their life. I mean, these are people that would have died if they have never met my dad. He works for uh, the American Jewish Distribution Committee. He was the doctor for all the Jews that left from Ethiopia to go to Israel. But that wasn't enough. He needed to help more people. He started adopting. So he has five adopted kids. I have four uh, brothers. I'm the youngest. And we have a huge family. Even though we're just five adopted kids, there's kids that need place after surgery, after whatever, and his house is just open. So at one time, we had maybe 25 people living in our house. This is uh, the family. Uh, I'm on the left side. Uh, my dad used to say that was when I used to be cute. Um, but this gave me a reason to see the value of family and how important it is to have people who love you, who support you in anything and everything you need. Now, this is a huge turn in my life, coming to America as a freshman. 
it's the most shocking country in the world. I was just shocked by everything, the people, the culture, the food, just everything was so shocking. And I was also alone, and I didn't have anybody. I came, left my family. My dad lives in Ethiopia. Most of my brothers live in Ethiopia. And it was extremely hard. It was extremely hard, but this gave me a new reality. America has amazing education and led my life to be a bit better. Even though it was sad, I was only living in America without my family, it was still, it's better. So after I came to America, I saw that I was in a great position to give. So I started by simply collecting clothes, clothes that people didn't need, and taking it back to Ethiopia and so forth. And then we um, organized our own Peace for Points um, and raised money to build a school and a water well in Ethiopia. And I've been working with different kind of nonprofits to give back as much as I can. They say that when you give, you get. And I truly believe in that. Right? The kinder you are, the more kindness will come your way. So therefore, I was very lucky and fortunate to open my own business in New York City called Ethio Art Collection. And what it is is basically we're a platform to raise awareness about Ethiopian art and show the beautiful artwork and showcase their stories and talents to the world market. So we buy art and sell it internationally. Again, as, as a new company, we also want to give back. So we've, we've decided to partner up with a nonprofit to build a school so more people and more children can have a better education and have a better life. This is one of my favorite quotes. Never give up. Today is hard. Tomorrow will be worse. But the day after tomorrow will be sunshine. Living on the street, you had no hope. Nothing. I mean, there's no... All you think about is where you're going to sleep and where you're going to eat. That's it. That's all we had. But moving to America, being adopted, having an amazing father gave me more hope, gave me a better lifestyle, better, made me a better person. I can now take all the thorns that were on my way and take them as a lesson. And I can finally stop and appreciate the rose. Thank you all for listening. Amazing, my friend, amazing.